under the project guidance of Shamwar Mullah, Assistant Professor of Ramon College. So whenever you, anyone of us goes to buy a new mobile phone or a new laptop or computer, we generally tend to see a few categories before buying, such as camera or the battery backup or um, uh, the display. But most importantly, we have to see about it is the RAM and the ROM and its processing speed. So these are basically memory devices. A memory device is any physical device capable of storing information either temporarily or permanently. So there are two types of storage. Magnetic storage stores data in a magnetic form and a optical storage that stores data in optic optical form. Magnetic, mem magnetic storage has very high storage capacity but optical storage has faster data accessing capacity. Although optical storage is now quite becoming obsolete uh, due to more strides in the magnetic storage field. <coughs> in 1990, IBM researcher Stuart Perkins discovered that when he made a uh, very fast uh, current through uh, is that a laser? So he passed a current through uh, two magnetic layers, sandwiching a non-magnetic layer. And when the current flew, flew out of the other layer, other side, the electrons were spin polarized, were having either spin up or spin down. He coined this study as spintronics or spin electronics. In 1996, J. Slonsky predicted that current flowing between two ferromagnetic layers may induce a steady precision of the moments or novel form of switching of magnetization. The later effect is applied to make HTT MRAM while the former effect is still under investigation. Now what are the applications of spintronics? Earlier, during, before this uh, spintronics came into field, the main, the main uh, you know, uh, amount of data in, uh, in that time were in megabytes. But, af but after the Spintronics, IBM released Dexter 16 GB title, which, which had 16.8 uh, GB of storage capacity, which was a huge leap at that time. Subsequently, with the progress of time, better data centers as storage clouds like Google Cloud and iCloud came to be. At that time, interesting fact is in 2005 alone, all the Spintronic devices accumulated throughout the world had a total storage capacity of 100 exabytes, that is approximately 10 to the power 9 gigabytes. But as time progresses, we will have new informations and we will have to have create better storage devices to store all those informations and to access them be better. In 2007, the basic spin valve, see this, this one, it acts as a valve. This acts as a valve, changing the, uh, polar the spin polarity of the electrons. Now, you know, we can call it as a spin valve. So, in 2007, the basic spin valve evolved into a related thin length structure, magnetic tunnel junction, or uh, that displays giant tunneling magneto resistance, TMR. The, the incident current here, the incident current here, tunnels through a insulating layer, thin insulating layer, and the output current or the electrons were spin polarized, had either spin up or spin down, depending on the orientation of these magnetic layers. This total device, this total thing, uh, substance, is called TMR element. The TMR signal is 100 times larger than the GMR signal, or the giant magnetorist signal. So magnetoresistive random access memory, what is it? Magnetoresistive random access, like earlier, we, in the spin valve, in the spin valve, we use the polarity of the electrons. But here in the magnetoresistive random access memory, we use the domains of the materials. Domains of the magnetic domains of the materials. Magnetic domains are uh, oriented in two possible ways. We can say this as bit zero and this as bit one, 
And to use magnetoresistor effect in the reader, one needs to add more, one needs more additional magnetic layers. But what if, what if we, um, we can add more types of orientation to it? This has only two orientation. Chiral magnets has a property of being twisted. Its magnetic domain is being twisted. So it can have more types of types of states or more domains to actually store data. Also, in tidal magnet, in 2000, uh, 25 years earlier, physicists theoretically predicted that there is a magnetic vortex called Skirmions. A decade earlier, it was experimentally verified. Skirmion is a magnetic vortex. It is local, stable, soliton-like solution of a non-linear field theory. It is often interpreted as a particle-like object. I, I, can, I, I have prepared a slide uh, with a video to, to help you understand what, how a Skirmion works. See, a Skirmion is passing through the layer, changing all the atomic polarity as it passes through. It is actually a magnetic vortex, but it has its own, as it passes through the magnetic layer, it aligns the magnetic atomic poles accordingly. So we can store information in those atomic poles, as the atomic poles, if we can manipulate the scrimions. If we can manipulate the scrimions, scrimions can be manipulated by applying electric and magnetic fields. This is a table of scrimion host materials. What are the practical applications of skirmions? Skirmions can be used as anchors, or gates, and also we can use skirmions for future racetrack type in memory logic com computing technologies. See here we can see how skirmions may help in developing racetrack type memory devices. Now I produce our data our data, extra diffraction, this is an extra diffraction scan data, XRD data of the APG thin film. This data shows how stable APG thin film, thermodynamically stable APG crystals are. The thinner the crystals, the more stable the crystal is, or thermodynamically stable. Now here I show you an image curve for both the in-plane and out-of-plane fields. This shows the derivative of the in-plane magnetization in respect to the applied magnetic field to better reveal unwinding of the helical phase. The topological effect data shows you that uh, suggests the presence of skirmions in it. And finally, the LTEM images of a 5, 55 nanometer thick cross-section of an epitaxial FEG film show, uh, definite, definitely proves the presence of skirmions in it. At 0 0.6 kilo western, you can see the skirmion magnetic vortex present here in the crystal. In ancient times, in ancient times, uh, people used to store information in papyrus books and stuff. But it was only written by an elite section of the society and was, was affordable to only the elite section. And the major part of the society was left unknowingly. But with more as a society grew more civilized, as a society grew more civilized, we could uh, we the information went to all the hands and now anyone with a device and the will to access any information can do so. But as time progresses we will have more information to store and we will need better storage capabilities because in the ancient times a lot of our manuscripts have been destroyed due to natural events as they were not stored permanently. But using our FEG thin films and others, using our FEG thin films and, uh, and skirmions in it, we can permanently store information in it for future references. We can be a good strong link in a chain of generations to come. I want to conclude my speech here saying that people from the past, the only information from the past that have been provided that has been transferred to us 
is the uh, information of gods and goddesses in various parts of the country. If we can transfer better information, we can, be we can use better means to transfer information to our future generations, we can be something like godlike to them. And we all know that we can, if we can be, if why be a king, if we can be a god. Thank you. So it was 10 minutes and 30 seconds. Thank you for finishing it early. And